my name is Carrie and welcome to my channel. Long time no see, it's been quite a while since I have posted a video. I think the last time I posted I was living on the other side of the world um, and now it's been about a year in my new home and also starting a new job. I have finally been reading again so I am hoping to get back into the routine of posting some videos. Today's video is going to be a pile of possibilities for Shorty September. I don't think I will get to all of these books, but there are quite a few that I would like to try to attempt. So to start off, I'm going to go over the books I own physical copies of. And first I have Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is a literary fiction about two young black British adults who end up meeting each other randomly at a bar one night and they strike up this kind of relationship or connection from their shared backgrounds and it's kind of examining the course of their relationship um, over time. I've heard absolutely amazing things about this and this is one that I'm really hoping to get to because I feel like I am the last person to have read this book. Next I have The Swimmers by Julia Atsuka. This is about a community center that has a group of swimmers um, that have like a routine of swimming daily there and um, one day there's like an issue with the pool and they have to close it and um, all of the community members are kind of struggling with this change in their routine. They're not sure what to do now and one swimmer in particular um, is struggling um, even more so with this because she is suffering from Alzheimer's and this break in routine is kind of causing more seismic shifts in her routines overall. And so it's kind of examining um, how this has a lasting effect on her. Then I have a book by one of my favorite authors, Greek Lessons by Han Kang. This is translated from the Korean by Deborah Smith. And this is the most recent of Han Kang's published works and the last one that I have to read before her next novel is published in English. Um, this is one that I have been kind of hesitating on, not just because it's my last one before her next publication, but because this is the one that has been really controversial among her readers. Um, this is the story of a woman who um, like doesn't speak and she's in these Greek lessons and the professor develops this kind of fascination with her that turns into a connection because they both have experienced some like recent tragedies. Um, I don't really know how they're forming a connection though because obviously they're not speaking. Um, so I'm very curious how this is going to play out. Um, but I can't lie, this one I'm really anxious if I'm going to like it or not. And the final physical copy that I have is The Autobiography of My Mother by Jamaica Kincaid. This is a fictionalized autobiography of a woman who was born and raised in Dominica during, I believe, the end of the colonial period and um, like just as Dominica was getting its independence. Um, and so it's kind of a story of this woman, but also of Dominica as a country. Um, and that sounds really interesting to me. I've never read any Jamaica Kincaid. Um, and so I don't really know what to expect from this, but I'm intrigued. Now onto the audiobooks that I'm hoping to listen to. The first up is The Singularity by Balsam Karam. This is translated from the Swedish by Saskia Fogel. This is about a refugee camp where a woman witnesses another woman trying to search for her child and in the distress and dismay of the situation, the mother commits suicide and the other woman who is pregnant, she sees this and this has a seismic shift on her life. She has also experienced a lot of tragedy in her life and I'm not quite sure if this is like her reflecting on that and the connection to this woman who um, was really at her wit's end or if this is like a continuation of the pregnant woman's life um, while being haunted by like another tragedy that she's witnessed. I haven't heard much talk about this, but this is a really short um, literary fiction and I am intrigued how this story is going to develop in such a short page count. Next is a book that I technically DNF'd a couple years ago, and that is Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. This is translated from the Spanish by Megan McDowell. And I DNF'd this a few years ago when I was first kind of trying horror books. This is a collection of horror short stories, and I think I was really in the wrong headspace at the time. I really liked the writing style, but the stories themselves were very dark, and it was around a time that I was reading a lot of very heavy books, so I think it was just too much at that time. 
I ended up getting an audiobook of this and um, so I'm hoping that maybe in this format it will be a little bit easier for me to digest these stories and that this time I will end up finishing this collection because I've heard amazing things about this author and again I really enjoyed her writing style. I think I just need to find my own groove with getting through her work. Then I have a classic, Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston. This is a classic nonfiction, which sounds a little weird, but I think it rightfully deserves this title. It is a nonfiction biography of um, the last man who was enslaved and brought to the United States during the transatlantic slave trade. And it's the story of his life and who he was, and it's giving voice to a story that um, obviously many people shared, but very few were able to be given agency and have their stories told. And um, Zora Neale Hurston kind of went on this investigative um, drive, literally driving to um, the places where this man lived and talking with people that knew him. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by this because um, I haven't really been reaching for nonfiction this year, so I'm not sure if it's, um, you know, if it's something I'm going to be in the mood for, but it is something I really want to try to read, especially because it's by Zora Neale Hurston. Next I have The Impatient by Dejali Amadou Amal. This is translated from the French by Emma Ramadan, and this is set in Cameroon and follows the lives of three women who are all co-wives. They are in a polygamous marriage with a man that they don't particularly like, and um, this is the story of how they really come together to really carve their own path and find their own independence. And I'm excited for this one because from the description, it doesn't sound like some other books that I've read that discuss um, polygamous marriage where the wives are kind of against each other and they see each other as enemies or like combatants. In this, it sounds very much like the women understand their shared experiences and use that as a way to bond and um, really decide their own fate for one another. And last but certainly not least, I have Western Lane by Chetna Maru. This is a coming of age story of a young girl who um, she has really dedicated her life to playing cricket and this was fueled by her father's desire for her to play this sport and it examines this complicated relationship she has with this sport and how it affects her interpersonal relationships with her family and developing friends and I'm really excited for this one. I've heard pretty good things about it and I'm really excited to learn a little bit more about cricket because I don't know much about it, um, but this sounds like it will be a really interesting story. And those are all the books that I have on my pile of possibilities for Shorty September. I'm hoping to get through about three to four of these throughout the month because again, they're not very long, but I don't know what I'll be in the mood to reach for first, so we will have to wait and see. Thank you so much for watching this video and happy reading! Bye!